Good evening and welcome to the Golden Goddess Circle. I'm so happy you are all here. Ah, it's been a fabulous week, hasn't it? I mean, I don't know about you, but a lot of things happening right now. And there's a lot of energy in the vortex. We have floods and storms and, yeah, interesting phenomena of the weather going on. And I should think many of you maybe are also noticing these repercussions of all the energy in the field in your own lives. Is that true? Have you had some interesting things happening? <laughs> I had a really interesting thing happen just two days ago. Um, I was actually going to go out and do some shopping. And then just as I was going out, I heard this real bang in my house. And Grace and I were like, what was that? And so we looked around the house and we didn't see anything unusual. So we thought, ah, it's going to be something by the neighbors. No problem, no problem. And then just as I was heading out to go shopping, I hear water. And I was like, where's water? That's really weird. And then I go down into my cellar and the creative room, kind of the atelier of the Licht House was this high flooded with water because I had decided to wash a pillow, you know, a big heavy pillow in the washing machine. And through the momentum of this heavy pillow in the washing machine, the washing machine had fallen off the little sort of pedest it was on and had ripped off the, um, the hose pipe thing that goes into the back of the washing machine, which meant that all the water was flooding freely. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> why? Why would this happen? And then Grace and I and her dad, Stefan, spent quite some time shoveling water into 57 buckets and carrying these buckets out from the cellar, out upstairs, putting it out. And we were able to get it done in about two hours. But what did happen in that time is that I slipped. I slipped carrying one of these buckets of water because everything was wet. And so I landed right on my beautiful behind. And my tailbone is a little sort of... But it's all going well, and I'm really lucky that we caught the water before it had gone any further. And the best news is I was able to not only clean it all up, and it's all looking fabulous, but I was also able to reinstall the washing machine with a new pipey thing. I did it all on my own, and I am mega proud of myself. Yay for that. <laughs> the other good news is that today I had my last ergotherapy um, for my finger, and the therapist said, amazing i have full function of the finger full movement the, the scar is healing beautifully i really say that's thanks to healy i've been using the healy scar program uh, the skin program for scars um, on a daily basis and it's amazing i can tell you in about i don't know two three weeks time you won't see hardly anything left of my zeus harry potter finger so yay to overcoming challenges don't you think and just the other day, then a friend of mine, when I told her the washing machine story, she said, "Du bist schon so ein meaning that you're you're an unlucky person that that happened to you. And I was like, absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not. I see myself as an incredibly lucky being because all these things that have been happening in just these last weeks with the finger and the not the flight and then the, and the you know the, the the accident where I was able to help someone down right to the washing machine just was magical because I got so many insights and I really understood so much of how you know also my thoughts and my patterns had contributed to this and it's all good because I am just so certain that only good things happen to me. And whenever surprises happen, they're always there for some blessing. So this morning when I was going to get this new tube for the washing machine to reinstall it, I went to the, the local, you know, what's it called, building supply thing. And I found an amazing guy who told me exactly what I needed. And he even gave me a cheaper solution than buying the other thing. So I go down to the cash, be proud with my little host thing. And then I discover I'm two euros short because I decided to buy some um, light bulbs as well. So I'm at the cash and I'm like two euros short. And I said, I've only got this with me now. So then I'll bring the, the light bulbs back and take it like that. And then a guy behind me at the cash says, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you those two euros. And then I nearly caught myself saying, no, 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 don't do that. And then I said, really? That's amazing. Thank you so much. That's, that's such a blessing. Thank you for doing that. So then I got that and I said, you know what, I'm going to pay it forward. And then I got out of the building shop 
And there was this guy um, selling uh, newspapers for, it's a special newspaper in Austria that is published for the homeless. And there was this guy selling that. And I gave him those two euros because I went to my car, had the money with me, gave those two euros to him. And he was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I drove off that parking lot feeling so happy and blessed that it just makes me realize that nothing ever happens for nothing. It's always there to lead us to the next little piece of the puzzle. And that leads me to the heart healing, to the Healing Hearts Retreat that I am hosting from the 12th to the 14th of July here at Des Lichtwerk. We already technically have all 10 spots spoken for, but you know me, as long as that money isn't in the account, that spot is still open. So if you are now hearing this and think, oh my goodness, what a retreat at this Lichtwerk, I want to be there, then, you know, send me an email because right until the end, it's first come, first serve. And those 10 spots are going to be filled with the most amazing women that are meant to be here to heal together. So talking about healing, let's talk about heartbreak. Let's talk about that moment when we notice something in the heart is cracked. Something in the heart is feels kind of broken. So question to this beautiful round of goddesses here right now. Who of you knows heartbreak? Who of you has been through moments of heartbreak where you were really wondering how you could take that next breath, how that grief and that despair and, and all those emotions felt so overwhelming that you almost thought that it had something to do with you and that this pain and grief might mean that you're not worth it or that there's something wrong with you. Because isn't that sometimes the conclusion that we make when something bad happens to us, when something painful happens to us, that we think this is something that I have created because I'm a bad person, maybe? Could be. I know many moments, and there are only many, I know many moments where I was literally on my knees crying with God, or like, why? And how could this happen? And why me? And how am I ever going to get out of this darkness? I call those moments the dark night of the soul when you just don't know any further you all the tools and all the things that you've been doing so far suddenly don't seem to work and you've got to find a new approach to the problem so how many of you know those dark nights of the soul and if you sort of calculate sort of over your finger right now how many of those moments have you already been through in your life would you be honest I will really say, yes, I know those moments. So let's do a little vote here in the round. Um, how many of those moments do you know? If I go back in history, I would say I know three. Three moments where I was really shattered. It felt as if my heart had been shattered into a million pieces and I couldn't even imagine opening it up anymore. Everything felt, I just want to protect myself. I just want to, you know, close off and go away and hide and just not be present anymore because it was just so friggin' painful. Do you know that feeling? Yeah, we're seeing three, five. We all know those times, don't we? And now the next question is, how did you get out of that? And could it be? that there's still something left inside of you, some seed, some pattern, some kind of stickiness that is still connected back to those moments. Because I have noticed that ever since those moments have passed, little moments do come up that remind me of that time in my life. And music often does that for me. I am collecting music for the Healing Hearts Retreat and stumbled across a beautiful song by the Scorpions called Follow Your Heart. And that, you know, on Spotify, you get more songs like that, took me down, I'd say a rabbit hole last night of listening to all these songs that reminded me of one of my very first times when I felt my heart was broken. And listening to these songs again made me realize how much further I have come and how many amazing experiences have passed since that one event and have been able to kind of amplify my consciousness, have been um, training me to be where I am now. So I truly believe that all those moments have made me a better person. And the good news is that I have been noticing, especially in the last couple of weeks, how a lot of that old pain coming with this 
often new physical pain, right? Was able to go. So the question that I was asking myself yesterday is, what do people do who overcome challenges like that, overcome heartbreak and come out better people? And what do people do who go through heartbreak like that and kind of don't come out the other side? What happens to them? And then I look back, not only into my own life, but into my coaching practice. I've been helping people for now over 20 years and things like that. And I noticed a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. What I noticed is that in these two groups of people, we'll put them in, in you know, the ones that overcome and thrive and the ones that overcome but kind of don't get up off their knees anymore. The thing that the, the things that the people do who are able to thrive even after the most horrific events happening to them are the following. First of all, I noticed that those kind of people stop doing the following. They stop denying, defending, and distracting themselves from the pain. They stop denying, defending, and distracting. Instead, they go ahead and they acknowledge the pain. They acknowledge and feel the pain. They feel it fully. There's no more hiding behind it. It's like, th this is it, and I'm going to sit with it for a while. And once they have acknowledged and felt it, they're able to transform it and make that energy that was so intense into something better. They're actually able to go the next step after transformation, which is manifestation. They're able to use that energy and funnel it into a new creation. Don't you agree? So those are the, the prime differences that I've noticed. The next thing that people do who decide, I'm going to come out of this stronger, I'm going to fix my crown and march on, is they're able to go through those five stages of grief really consciously. So let's go into those five stages of grief so that you also know when grief comes up again, and this could be old re-triggered grief or new grief, which phase you're in right now, because the moment you realize which phase is coming up, you can do something about it. You can go ahead and transform whatever is coming up. So when we are dealing with grief, we usually start out with some element of shock. It's the shock of how could this be happening, right? And after the shock, we usually go into denial, like, no, 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 this is not happening to me. No, 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 it's all good. And I'm just going to keep the focus and, and kind of deny what's happening, on, what's happening right now. After denial usually comes anger. We're angry at God. We're angry at ourselves. We're angry at the situation, angry at the other people. So this anger is a very natural part of the process. After the anger usually comes the phase of bargaining. And that's when we're kind of trying to make a deal with the universe. And we're going to say, okay, but what if I just do this? I'm just going to eat clean. I'm going to, I don't know, skip sugar. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to do this more. Will it then go away, this grief? Mm, it doesn't usually, because we usually then have to go through that phase of depression. That phase where we're really confronted with that emptiness, the feeling of hopelessness, the, the kind of the dark night of the soul. And only when we have been able to consciously go through all those five stages, which, by the way, might not happen in that consecutive order, they're all over the place. And sometimes a denial will come back again later on, or the bargaining will come back again on later on. Only when we're able to do that, are we able to then focus on the four steps of joy? I think they're actually five steps of joy, but let's start with the four. To create joy, to create happiness, we have to be able to anticipate that that happiness, that that joy is still out there for us. It's still there within us. And that we are anticipating that joy to come back into our lives, to feel it again. Once we can anticipate it, the moment joy comes, we're actually able to experience it. Question again, how many of you know either other people or even maybe yourselves when you're in a beautiful situation, something really good is happening right now, but you're not even able to actually take it in. I remember in parts of my depression that I felt like I was in a, in a surreal film. I could be in paradise with amazing people around me, but I felt it was all kind of further away. I wasn't really part of it. I wasn't able to drop into that joy because I was still carrying so much grief and denial and anger and stuff with me that it felt like it was not part of me. It was separate from me. 
But once we're able to experience joy again, and that can be, you know, little micro moments, but acknowledging those moments means that we can experience them. Then we're able to express our joy. And that's also something so beautiful to do. And sometimes we can have the habit or the pattern to not even express that joy, to kind of hold back because we might be in an environment where other people are not, you know, not in a good mood or not having a good time right now. And then we can say, oh, no, I better not express too much of my joy because it might piss other people off, which it might well do. But that expressing of joy is incredibly important because only then are we able to actually share it. And I grew up with a fabulous dad who always said, geteiltes Leid is halbes Leid. Geteilte Freude is doppelte Freude. That means shared grief is half the grief and shared joy is double the joy. So remember that next time when you're noticing a happy moment or just that little bubbling up of happiness inside of you, express it. At least let your face know. <laughs> And then once we've expressed that joy, what do we do then? We remember joy. We remember joyful moments. And then once we've gone through those four steps, we can get into step five, which is manifesting joy very purposefully, going out and seeking those moments, looking for those people that can share that joy to do things that we love. I had a beautiful coaching client today, a young man who's battling allergies. And we had our third session today and we were kind of talking about the changes that he's experienced. And then he said, you know, I've noticed that when I'm doing things that I really love, I have no allergies. And I said, isn't that interesting? Tell me more about it. And he said, yeah, I noticed when I'm out and about with my friends and we're kind of doing something really fun, I have no allergies. But then I'll go home and I'll think about going out again and doing something and the allergy comes back. And I said, see, so that means that the moment you are feeling good and you're feeling joyful, your body is stronger, your immune system is stronger and many symptoms that we have just go away. So notice those moments, notice the moments when you're free of pain, notice the moments when you're completely free of grief and celebrate those moments, make those moments expand because that's literally how we can overcome great challenges and great painful experiences that we might've had to move on into a new direction without denying, distracting and deflecting from that. Does that make sense? So in the Healing Hearts Retreat, we're going to go through all those processes in the most joyful way and support each other. Because I've learned so much from just these last three, three years. And then, of course, these long 50 years that I've spent on this planet that I want to share that. And I know that when we get together in a safe environment with the right people who are all in for the same goal, which is to thrive, to not only overcome something, but to really transform it and manifest what we really want, that group energy is so friggin' powerful that it uplifts us all. It's like the three musketeers. It's all for one and one for all, right? <laughs> because then suddenly we don't feel separate from others. We don't feel separate from the world, but we notice we're all one. And if there's someone in my circle that is still grieving, my love has not shone bright, bright enough yet. It hasn't burnt bright enough yet, just like um, Nelson Mandela said, or Gandhi. Um, I really believe that this connection amongst us, and especially amongst us sisters, can have us do the most incredible things together. And that's why I'm really looking forward to this gang of amazing women coming together 12th to 14th of July. So without further ado, I'm going to get Nicole into the spotlight with me and ask you, how do you feel about this topic? We can't hear you, honey. You've got to unmute yourself. I can so much relate to that, <laughs> to both topics, of course. Uh, just uh, just this past weekend, I had this tremendous joy. <laughs> I was able to join um, also a sisterhood circle here in, in Greece where I live. And it was beyond beautiful because um, I, I didn't have any expectation. I came into it rather spontaneously. Somebody invited me to join and um, I said, yes, I come because it seems to be the right thing at the right time. 
I was also going through some challenges and I needed to get out, to get out of my normal surrounding, to get out of the city. And it was in a beautiful, magnificent uh, nature, nature uh, uh, environment, which is already healing itself. And mm. it, it brings me so much joy just being in a place like this to walk barefoot, to feel uh, the earth under my feet, uh, to have beautiful people around me. And we were, <laughs> funny thing, also 10 beautiful women. Uh, all of them were Greek except myself. And all of them spoke also mainly only Greek. <laughs> and I didn't expect that. I, I was thinking it was more an international group of people. And in the beginning, I really was struggling because all the sharing and this was very personal and very special uh, was in, in Greek. And I was thinking, huh, then my old pattern started coming and I was thinking, oh, here I am again. I am the outsider again. I'm like, like not belonging to the group. I, I try my best. And, and then I, I said, okay, I have the choice now. Do I want to be in this or do I want to really contribute? And uh, do I care about all the other people? And in maybe in, in between, I can ask certain people, can you translate me? Or And I realized also I could really feel even what they were saying, even if I didn't understand everything. And I learned also a lot. I learned a lot of Greek, more Greek words. Cool. And, <laughs> and the joy of being together in a circle. That's why I love also the work you're doing, we are all doing is beyond joyful mm. it's like you say like you're saying being in a, a safe environment and also being open to whatever is happening there uh, i i realized coming with expectation it, it's completely useless and when you are there and really present then the most beautiful things are happening for example uh -huh. i was rushing there in the car already knowing i'm half an hour late and I was like, that was triggering me because I often am late. And I was like, Ugh. and I was in the traffic jam and it was like not going for forward. So I was like, really, oh, I'm missing the, the opening of the whole thing. In the end, it turned out I'm in Greece. I was the first participant <laughs> <laughs> arriving there. The full group was there only four hours later. So I was okay. there. I was there. And uh the the beautiful woman who who has been running the retreat she said it's all about just being present and accept whatever is happening and we are here to relax you are coming from this bus just sit down by the pool enjoy a glass of tea, a drink of tea or something like that and just be there and i was thinking oh i didn't this time i didn't take a book I didn't take anything to entertain myself because I knew we have a schedule. So I was just basically there. And I tell you, during these days, we had a lot of time in between. We worked also a lot on ourselves, exchanging, learning ab about our bodies, really doing so many joyful things, dancing, painting our bodies, like really doing crazy things. It was called the Wild Sisterhood re Retreat. And doing these things brings so much joy and when you when you are connected with people like that even if you don't know them and we were all really different i would have never met these people in my daily life most likely but there we were and it was like for a couple of days a community and just everybody accepted the other and um the uh, the lady who who conducted the whole workshop or the, the two beautiful women who did it they said they have never had a group that was that open and that free and so trusting also we were really trusting each other and sharing really deep intimate thoughts and uh, and that was very very special and made me coming back really joyful <laughs> if you want to say nice and I think sometimes there's this misconception, and I often hear that feedback when, when I say, okay, we're doing a retreat, we're doing this or that. And I'm saying, oh, is that going to be a pity party? Is this going to be lots of women kind of just saying, oh, this happened to me and this happened to me? And it's kind of this little downy energy. It's not. 
It's not. This deep connection between women in a safe environment is not about just, you know, pouring the pity on each other. It's, as you were saying, it's relaxing. It's being open and relaxing into the moment. And I think that relaxing part is the most important part. Because when we're still in that process of, of dealing with grief, we can kind of want to power through it. We want to make it go as quickly as possible because it's not pleasant, but we've got to be able to just drop into that moment. And it makes sense on a physiological um, perspective, too, because we need our nervous system to go from being hypervigilant, being kind of feeling attacked and threatened through all the things that have happened to go back into parasympathetic mode and allow it to happen so that our neocortex can turn on again. So I think it's very important to also acknowledge that when traumatic events happen to us, when we experience them, put it like that, when we experience traumatic events, we have a mental, an emotional, and a physical part, and also a spiritual part, most likely, to deal with and to, to kind of uncover. And that physical part of the body is, is so fascinating to me because I think so much of, of coaching or mindset work often forgets about the body. And I've noticed that the body in itself, we've talked about this often in the goddess circle, body itself holds that trauma because it remembers it. The body never forgets. So you've got to take that time and relax into it to allow it to bubble up from the body so it can release and that's where breath work and, and being in nature and doing creative fun things without any big purpose are very very helpful I noticed that yesterday it was fun after all the we then had to take the washing to my mom's house and do the washing there Grace and I and we were, we both noticed we were really tired we we you know all that carrying the buckets all that excitement we felt tired so we then fell asleep on the couch together it was super nice and in the evening, I was actually feeling tired and I thought, I'm just going to go to bed. And then if another friend called me and said, do you want to go to the sauna? And I was like, yeah, I don't know, but sauna would be good, hot, cold. I do love that. So then I said, no, you know what, I'm going to go. And I went for just an hour. I did three sort of quick sauna things, cold dips, cold dips. And then I got home and I felt completely renewed. And that's when I sat down and wrote the invite to the heart healing retreat. Or healing hearts retreat because it, I was just in that flow I felt totally pumped from having taken that time out to relax and I think that's something I just really want to put out towards you all ladies remember remember those moments of doing nothing are so so important otherwise we stay stuck in that hamster wheel don't we I heard another interesting thing today have you ever heard of the um word popcorn brain you have? I saw a fascinating video today by a neuroscientist explaining the popcorn brain and saying that it's really a thing right now. And that's why I love us here, that we're able to, to deal with this popcorn brain in a new way. A popcorn brain is this phenomena that we might find ourselves doing or other people doing, is that you're waiting in line at groceries or or you're, um, I don't know, you're, you're in between doing things and you're constantly on the phone. It's like an, an, a habit to the moment you're not doing something to scroll through your phone. And, and that creates this popcorn brain. And that means that the brain is constantly looking for new stimulation and you get distracted. You, you um, are no longer focused on being present, but you're addicted to this thing. So to go against that popcorn brain, we need what? Discipline. I've really noticed that. Also to deal with the, the, mental, the mental programming that can sometimes get stuck after we've experienced traumatic events because our mental computer up here will constantly relive it, constantly replay the scenes of the past if we let it do that. And the only way to break that habit is discipline. The discipline of noticing, ooh, I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole again. Ooh, I'm going back into the past again and bring the brain back into the here and now. And that's where breath work is so valuable. So really taking those little moments throughout the day, even if it's just five minutes, to take those conscious breaths, to tune out of everything that's going on outside of you, come back to yourself, feel the feelings, breathe through them and refocus on what you want is going to help you quit the obsessive thinking about the pain in the past 
and restructure your brain to be able to be more supportive to you, to, to think of the thoughts that actually have you feeling better. Because we know that it's the thoughts that we think give us the feelings that we feel. So we're the ones in charge there. The moment we notice we're getting thoughts that are dragging us down, we need to refocus and bring it back to good thoughts that have us feeling good. So what was your biggest takeaway from the retreat that you were just at? What's the highlight that pops in your mind right now? I just wanted to add to your story that we did one thing which I really liked. It, it, uh, it fits to that what you were saying. The inner critique that we often have, like talking, like talking this voice in our brain, right? And what we did is we addressed it and we were saying, okay, what is it that constantly comes up in my brain? What is that saying? Whatever saying. It is not us, right? It's not us. It's it's some something else that is coming in within us. And what we did is we had a piece of dough, every one of us, and we were giving it a shape. We were giving it a shape while we were telling what our inner critique towards ourselves is. And then the shape, it it was amazing to see how these shapes really reflected what the people were saying and they intuitively or we intuitively made it this way and then we could interpret this figure it was either abstract or a per even a person and we gave it a name we also gave it a name that I was that. i that like was, that. yes and then we let it dry in the sun and we took care of it it's funny because it was out of dough one person left it outside in the night and the fox ate it. <laughs> so it was not there anymore. So we said, okay, this is done. It's gone. It's released. And um, and and everybody else took it back home. And we have it now uh, as a reminder, whenever you see it, yeah, you have this to tell you, ah, re remember, you are constantly seeing it like, like we are writing our... Um, our little um, sayings like from last week, like I am the person and only good things are happening to me, it's standing here. And so it reminds me. So these like really constantly doing something where you are supporting yourself where in whatever situation you are. And uh, and I mean, the biggest takeaway of this week was uh, weekend was really that no matter where you are from, uh, what story you bring in as soon as you connect with others in a in a circle in a community uh, this all is being gone yes. it's, it's like you're carried and even if you're showing your pain and sharing your pain which happens in these circles but it's not to make yourself naked it's for everyone to embrace it and learn from it and mm. then healing can happen magic can happen and then this uplifts everyone because we are all part of it right like talking about pain like everybody of us has ours uh, we have our stories and together we can release them in moments like that mm -hmm. absolutely i'm thinking with that dough experiment i'm definitely going to use that in the healing hearts i'm just thinking of these plus right yeah, um yeah. I, I think it would be also then nice to to do one piece of dough and talk about all the frustrations all the pain that has happened in the past and let that be check it out and then do another one when we talk about the positive future what does that look like that would be interesting wouldn't it to see those two different things like FEMO you could also use um or was it bread dough or was it salt dough what yeah was it? no it was actually a bread dough with cinnamon so it even smelled nice when you were using it but you didn't think of baking it and eating it just saying no 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 it was not that sweet no 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 it was no. <laughs> <laughs> I need no. I eat it <laughs> yeah that's also an idea yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I've, I've seen in the chat that we have, it's, I hope I say your name right, it's Kia. Um, you said you've had 100,000 heartbreaks and you've been doing the work for years now, meditations, hours of yoga, nature walks, and motivational spiritual speakers, and you've made great change and you gave forgiveness. You, you were able to go through that grieving process and realize that you're taking charge of building your own reality. Do you want to tell us more about that? Um, then do come into our spotlight. We'd love to hear what were the things that you did. 
walks in nature i can i can really only tell everyone go do it go do it it's it's the most healing thing you can do is connect back to mother earth that will really give you that sense of safety um i noticed just with the client that i was talking to today he's homeschooled right and he's with this allergy what has come up now and this was really interesting in the time that we've been working is that underneath the allergy was actually a deep seated fear of anything bad that would happen and he said you know because that thing that voice in my head is 14 years old right that voice in my head and we'll say but what if this happens and this could go wrong and what if that happens and I said see that voice we all know that voice we all have that voice but the question is do we let that voice lead or are we able to then take charge and take it into a different direction interesting Okay, over to you, goddesses. Anything you've got to add to that? Any question you have? Anything you'd like to say to that? I'd love to do a little meditation today where we connect with our hearts and check for the cracks and see what gifts lie in those cracks. So go ahead and ask your questions, give your input now. And then if there are none, which I'm seeing there's some, you're all shy today, and then we'll go into our meditation and just acknowledge what has happened and also, here's another thing of acknowledging what has happened. I think we very often when we talk about past pain or past experience that have happened to us, we say what I've just said, it happened to me. And I was, um, I don't know, yeah, I was a victim of, um, I was, as, if, as if it happened just from the outside and we had no idea why. What is much better to say, just to change your languaging, is to say, I experienced this. I experienced a great fall I experienced great grief and it's not something that happened to me but I experienced it so Etsuke is coming saying she'd love to come someday and join the group and share the story so many things have happened but she doesn't want to do that right now that's fine if if at some point it fits in again we will ask you if not that's also good but it's nice to know that yes there are many people out there who have gone through amazing things and very painful things and have come out stronger because they were able to refocus. You were going to say something, Nicole? No, no, no. no? Okay. Just, uh, yeah, just... Uh, just starting yeah. agreement. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then shall we do a little process where we go back into the past, check something out, and then come out stronger? Are you in for that? Then I'll release you out of the spotlight, Nicole. You can go and relax. Cool. And for everyone else here, go find a comfortable position. I would do this lying down if I were you, but you could obviously also do it sitting upright. And when you have found your most comfortable position, again, notice which parts of your body are connected to the earth beneath you. Just notice and start breathing into those body parts, noticing that connection to the earth, Noticing how those body parts feel right now. Do they feel warm or cold? Do those parts feel tense or relaxed? Just acknowledge what is right now and start focusing on your breath. Taking those long, deep, slow breaths where you focus on the exhale. The inhale happens automatically. And the exhale is a moment that you're celebrating. The exhale is the moment when we release control, when we just trust that that next breath in comes without us having to do anything about it. And that's beautiful to know. And then inside of yourself, say, I'm safe and feel that safety. Maybe imagine that you're a little child again, a little girl maybe, and you're being tucked up into bed by your most loving mama, whether she existed or not. Imagine this big spiritual best mom coming to your bedside and tucking you into your bed with this big fluffy blanket. And you notice how you're in this cocoon of safety right now. Go ahead and close your eyes if you haven't closed them. And notice how your body expands as you breathe in and it contracts as you breathe out. And find that rhythm of coherence 
as you, in your mind, maybe count from one to five as you breathe in. And from one to five as you breathe out. Your only job right now is to relax and to allow my voice and all the sounds you might be hearing around you to just relax you deeper and deeper, trusting and knowing that your body and mind know exactly how to relax. And every time you relax, you relax faster and deeper until you're in that perfect state of relaxation. Relaxing your body, relaxing your mind, relaxing every muscle in your body. That's right. Knowing the deeper you relax, the better you feel. And the better you feel, the deeper you relax. Very good. Now, roll your eyes up as if you're looking through the top of your head. Keep them rolled up there. And then say silently inside of yourself, my intention is to completely, immediately and permanently heal all the scars in my heart, to heal all that pain I have ever felt and to come out stronger, more loving, more wise than ever before so I can manifest my best life now and be happy healthy and well in every way. That's right. I delete, delete, delete all that could stop me. And I download, download, download everything I need to do so now with grace, ease and joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is. So it shall be or something even better. Well done. And now imagine being so relaxed that it's easy for you to imagine taking your consciousness and seeing it like this beautiful butterfly. Check out what color the butterfly is for you right now, the butterfly of your consciousness. And now when I count from one to three, Imagine taking that butterfly and bringing it out of your body and allowing that butterfly to spread its wings and start drifting and floating in the most graceful way up and up and up into the quantum field until you can imagine that this butterfly is flying amongst the stars and the planets and when you look down from this butterfly, you notice all the timelines like a spider web, your entire life unfolding in front of you. You can see into the past, you can see into the future, and you can look down into the now. And now from this very safe place, right in the center of the quantum field, when I count from five to one, at one, you're going to be back in that moment of inception, that very first time that you felt your heart was broken, where something happened that wounded you, where had you feel less than worthy, less than capable, less than lovable enough. Five, counting backwards, going back and back through time, four, even further back, no expectations. You're just drifting and floating on this beautiful butterfly. That's right, three and two and one. Be there now. Dive right into the moment and look through your own eyes and notice those feelings that you're feeling. Notice what is there. Just notice. And with your next three breaths, notice in which part of your body those feelings are stored. It might be your heart. It might be a completely different part of your body. Just notice. There you go. And now fly out of that moment again and come high up into the quantum field and come before that moment, well before that event or any of the events that are connected to that event. 
And then up here in the quantum field, you notice how there's this beautiful flower, a flower in the most gorgeous color scope that you can ever imagine. Maybe there's a bit of pink and green and yellow and blue. It's your safe haven, this flower. And you land your butterfly on this beautiful flower. And you notice how all those petals are being like this protective cocoon around you. And these flowers, these petals are giving you that feeling of comfort and security, knowing that you are, you are being held right now from the quantum field. That's right. And then from this beautiful flower, look down into the event and notice how this event created a series of event after this event that always was teaching you something else. It was something that kicked off a learning process that was maybe a painful learning process, but it was a progress. It was a process of learning and bringing in insights, wasn't it? So stay in this safe petals of flowers. And now with your next five full breaths, Allow yourself to release all those emotions. Go ahead and breathe with every exhale, releasing more and more of those emotions, just letting them go. And every time you breathe in, you're bringing in a new insight, something you now know, because hindsight is always 2020. It's perfect vision. And you know exactly why this had to happen, don't you? So what do you now know? Do you now know that you can make a new decision? Do you now know that this thing that happened was not a punishment? It was a wake up call. And you are now awake and present and connected. And you know what it was showing you. So inside of yourself, or even out loud, say to yourself what you now know. Start out with saying something like, I know I'm lovable. I know that I'm more than smart enough, more than fast enough, more than beautiful enough. I know I have everything inside of me to make a new choice, to create a new trajectory of my life, to create that very best life that I came to live. I now know why I came. I now know why I'm connected to these people, to these incidents, why they're part of my vortex. And allow your unconscious mind and your higher mind to communicate with each other. And then you notice how to this butterfly, other butterflies have come beautiful colored butterflies in, in all the colors of the rainbow. And all these butterflies are your spiritual helpers. They're your guides, your angels, and all beings of light who have come as butterflies to bring you more messages, to bring you more insights, more wisdom, so that you can make sense out of this what happened. Very well. Take three more breaths and allow these butterflies to telepathically bring you all the information that will allow you to not only release all those emotions, but to preserve those learnings and to take them forward into life. That's right. Very well. So now let's get on the butterfly again and dive down into the event. And look again through our own eyes. Look through your own eyes. And now see if you can still find those feelings or if they have gone now. Notice if there's any more space in this event. Maybe the colors have changed. Maybe the sounds you are noticing are different. Just notice. And feel gratitude towards yourself for taking this moment in time to fully acknowledge everything that happened then and now, and how you are in charge, you're always in control of your own state and the meaning that you give something. 
So now come out of the event again, come high up into the quantum field and nestle yourself into that beautiful flower bed again, feeling relieved and safe and nurtured and full of hope, full of that sparkle of life, that innate joy that you can feel bubbling up from inside of you. And now allow this butterfly to take you along your timeline to this present moment, looking down on all the events that happened between then and now, releasing and letting go of any emotions, any dysfunctional programming and habits, and gaining the insights, giving every event a new meaning, seeing how every single one of these events made you stronger, made you even more loving, made you even more wise than you are, right? And then come back into the here and now and bring that butterfly with you, imagining that that butterfly is now resting on your heart with the wings around the heart, gently taking care of this beautiful heart of yours. And as you notice your own heart, with your next breath, go right in the center of this heart. Get right into that sanctuary of your heart, that very safe place, and turn the light on in your heart. Just ask for the light. And as you ask for that light to appear, you see how from the center of your heart, this light is expanding out. Now notice, are there any cracks or scars or wounds on your heart? Send light there. Send light to these places. Do it like the Japanese. Fill those cracks and wounds with that soothing light right from the center of your heart. And say thank you to every single one of those battle scars, as I call them. And allow this light to flow into those cracks and allow it to fill up those cracks with this luminous light, allowing those wounds to cover and heal. Just imagine that tissue of the heart healing from the inside out, creating new tissue upgraded tissue filled with quantum light and blessed by all those light beings that came to see you. And notice how with every breath, your heart is becoming stronger and expanding the vortex around your heart to let that love that once created you flow freely. Allow it to flow freely through that sanctuary of your heart taking out any debris, any dysfunctional patterns and memories, any pain, washing it out, sending it all out into the outside area of your heart, really engulfing your own heart in all that light. Noticing how that vortex, that energy field around your heart is becoming stronger and larger, expanding out until you could imagine connecting your heart to the heart of the universe, that beautiful pulsating heart in the middle of the universe, that all that is, that I am, that one love, that one energy, that light. And then notice how your heart and this universal heart are starting this communication with each other, how that love can flow freely, and as that love flows freely between you, you're gathering resources, you're sponging it up. Just imagine allowing yourself to receive that love, to notice how that one heart is blessing your heart and cheering you on, to go take that love that you have inside of you and to share it freely without fear, without expectation of ever getting anything back because you trust that love, you trust yourself. And inside of yourself, affirm, I am fully open to give and receive love fully. I am fully open 
to give and receive love fully. And then notice how your heart is starting to smile and how that smile is coming up onto your face. And you notice how your whole face is relaxing and charging itself with this light. And then allow every single cell of your body to recharge with this light, giving yourself that, that nurturing and that care and that love that you so deserve. There you go. And now imagine taking that love out into the future. When I now count from one to five, at five, you will be in the most specific, appropriate moment in your future where something like in the past could happen again. And you notice what happens. One, take a full breath in and hold. Two, let it go, start drifting and floating. Three, out and out into the future. Four, getting close. And five, be there. And now notice, are you okay? Can you handle this? Check back in your heart. Your heart is saying, yes, we can handle anything. Our love is so strong. It's burning so hot that nothing can take that love away from me. And then travel on further, travel out further into the future to a beautiful moment where you give and receive that love so freely that it expands out into even more love. And then notice the feelings that you feel inside of your body. Notice the sounds around you. Would you be laughing? Would you be singing? What would happen? Would you be cheering someone else on or would you be cheered on? And could you imagine being loved the way that you love, that deep, that complete, and then when you're satisfied with this moment, allow yourself to download, download, download all the resources, all the talents, all the skills, all the feelings, all the beliefs, all the information that you need so that every day, in every way, your heart becomes stronger, your love burns even hotter. That's right. And then come back into the here and now. You can bring your butterfly with you. It's still resting on your heart. And then come back in the here and now and rub your hands together and say, yes, 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 I'm a love bug. I'm loved, I'm loving, I'm lovable. I'm love, that's, that's what I am. And my heart is strong, it's pulsating with love. And then when you're back in the here and now, feel that love inside of you and do a check-in with your heart. How does it feel right now? Sister Goddess Nicole, how do you feel right now? Very balanced, very soft and just be a being. <laughs> it's like feeling everything is okay hmm. it is all is good all is oh. good oh, and was anything interesting in the past that came up for you that surprised you maybe or how was that for you it's, it was very interesting for me because I was thinking of an incident that really uh, an experience that was very painful and it was losing a child in our family hmm. and it's been quite some time ago and I I always envision him being a, a butterfly. So oh, whenever yeah. I see a butterfly, there is always a message coming. And when you were mentioning this, I was like, woo. And it's um, very strong. So I feel very touched and blessed and was just right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. And what did you notice in your heart? Were you able to see some cracks and, and, and wounds? Absolutely, yes. I did the Raku <laughs> method. <laughs> the Japanese, like you were saying, it's, it was very helpful. And uh, yeah, I think that is so, so beautiful. And it gets more beautiful while you're 
mending these bricks with gold or with light because that's uh, that's the beauty of that uh, that technique also uh, of the Japanese uh, technique mm -hmm. and uh, I love imagining that because our hearts get even more beautiful through that and also more um, um, unique it's 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 yeah. showing our uniqueness also in a way and I also believe more capable of love you know if mm. we been through heartbreak we have a hard time even relating to others who have felt heartbreak and we're not aware of heartbreak is I think a part of loving and I think mm. the more we're able to go through those experiences the more we're able to love and and I know that those deepest moments of despair are also the ones that have me capable of incredible joy I don't want to be mid lane or life sort of not not really happy, not really sad, but kind of me okay. I, I I think that's the the spice of life to to be able to to have the whole spectrum of feelings and then to consciously choose which feeling, which wave am I going to ride, right? And and Rumi has that beautiful quote of the wound is where the light comes in. And we have to be aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing in the chat. I love that with the spice. I love that yeah. with the spice. That is, that is. We we can choose to eat. I mean, there's nothing wrong with porridge. I love porridge, but we can choose to eat bland food all our life. And we can choose to make different food experiences, and there'll be things we like, and there'll be things we like less. But at least we know, because we we learn through that contrast, don't we? If we never feel that contrast, we're never going to learn much. Um, I'm seeing in the chat that. You enjoyed the meditation. I'm so glad. Um, and for Ethel, it came through. I'm enough. I'm, I'm good as I am. Hell yes. You're more than good enough. And you're beautiful the way that you are. I love that. I love that. And Daniela is feeling peaceful. That's, yeah, I think we did a good job. I think we did a good job. So my loves, wow, it's two past eight. Time flew this time, didn't it? So shall we add one minute of intention just because that's what we do? I would say, how about our intention is to completely heal our hearts and expand into the most loving version of ourselves and to be happy, healthy, and well in every way. Are you in for that? Okay. So let's take a moment or just do a minute, powerful minute of group intention. As we take three breaths to connect to that beautiful heart of ours, we drop into the space of our hearts. And then from our hearts, we send the following intention. Our intention is to completely, immediately and permanently heal our hearts and be connected to that love that we are and expanded into the most loving version of ourselves and to be happy, healthy, and well in every way. Our intention is to completely, immediately, and permanently heal our hearts, connect to that amazing love that we are and expand into the most loving version of ourselves and to be happy, healthy and well in every way. Our intention is to completely, immediately and permanently heal our hearts, connect to that love that we are and expand into the most loving version of ourselves and to be happy, healthy and well in every way.
And then come back into the here and now, feeling grateful for yourself and this epic sisterhood, knowing that that love that you are and that you share is it's eternal. It's infinite. It'll always be there for you. <laughs> and tonight, when you go to sleep or whenever you do that, um, take a moment and write down five things that you now know. Five things that you now know, something that you learned through the heartbreak that you once went through and how that's made you a better person so that you can really cherish yourself for all that. Sister Goddess Nicole, do you have any closing words for us? No, I'm just so, <laughs> I'm just so, um, it feels so well. I feel so well. You know? I, 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 I've, I give you all a big hug, <laughs> group mm. hug, even virtual. Mm. And I've just seen that Sister Goddess Lily is also here. I didn't see you at the beginning. I love your hair down. That's a totally new look. Looks lovely. Oh, I came a few minutes late. You you triggered so many things. It was just amazing. I just have to watch the replay because you you really touched on so many areas that I could go for another hour just digesting everything that you that you touched on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I look forward to seeing you again next week. And I we all three here were hugging you, right? It's just imagine hug, 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 a big group hug. You could Feel our love. You can produce that beautiful oxytocin in your body, a happiness hormone that gets you all cuddly and lovey. And remember to share that love. The practice in action that you could do is choose a moment this coming next week where you spontaneously, just for the heck of it, share that love by giving someone a compliment, by paying, I don't know, paying something forward taking care of someone else, although you didn't have to, just because you want to, just because you feel that urge of love inside of you. Shall we do that? And then let's connect back next week and see what happened by us creating this beautiful ripple, ripple effect around this planet. Good plan? Good. Okay. Have a beautiful evening and send me an email if you want to be part of our Healing Hearts Retreat, 12th to 14th of July. I'm very excited for it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.